Welcome to the Write Good Books podcast, the audio companion to writegoodbooks.com with your host, Jason Boga. Welcome to the Write Good Books podcast. I'm Jason. I'm Scott. So you finished your first book and you got it published. It's out Yay! there. Yay! What do you do now? Do you stop writing? Do you move to the Bahamas and live off the royalties? No, you start writing your next book. I'll hand it over to Scott to talk about those struggles. Yeah, because I'd much rather be in the Bahamas right now. But yeah, that second book, you've, you've done something wonderful. You've gotten your first book out there. And, and whether or not it's been published, you've got it done. Congratulations. Now, let's assume that you have published it. You've gone through selling it and that process. Now you've got a book out there with your name on it that you've got to sell. And what does that mean? You're hitting your social networking. You're maybe doing book talks, checking statistics uh, if you're selling it yourself or looking for input from the publisher. If you're really lucky, they want you to get on a speaking circuit or, or something like that. More than likely, with your first book, you are the one lining up. Your speaking gigs at local libraries, for reading clubs, uh, schools, depending on what you're doing. You have so much more work still associated with that first book. Yeah, you're no longer the writer sitting in your desk in the middle of the dark, drinking an alcoholic beverage, betting those words out. Now all of a sudden you're a marketer, an advertiser, a public speaker. And, and even if you got the sweetest marketing deal from your publisher, you still have to get your name out your way. It, it's not like it used to be, I guess. I, I've never known a world as a writer without having to sell my own Right. Brand, I, yeah. I, I've I've heard that in the glorious olden days, the, <laughs> the big publishers would publish you, and they'd do all the work, and you would just show up where they tell you to show up. Now the big ten or whatever is down to big five, and new writers are not going to get the marketing and publicity that they could have expected 30 years ago. And in this world of we're self-published and we're small press writers, you know, our our publishers, if we have publishers, aren't really going to do most of that marketing at all. And it's all on the writer at this point. Yeah, uh, the, the marketing dollars are just not there for every author from Publisher's House. So you should just plan on, on doing it yourself. And, and how you do that is another episode. We're going to be talking about writing your second book while you're doing in all of this, unless Jason decides to change topics and do some fancy editing. <laughs> we won't be a discovery writing on this podcast. <laughs> okay. So both Jason and I, we have books out. We've both hit the talk circuits in various ways. I'm self-published. I have no publisher to fall back on for my marketing. Jason's with a small publisher. They have some marketing, but not quite the power to say a, you know, one of the top top five. So you've got these other time commitments, but you still want to get that second book out. I'm finding that I'm just having to schedule my book writing time is half what it used to be. I'm spending the other half of what used to be writing on book business. So that's that's my coping mechanism right now. Jason, what do you yeah. do? Well, it, it, it's kind of sad because you, know, you have all this momentum from your writing, your writing, and you're published. And and now you got to kind of break that momentum and shift your focus. So it's like you said, at best, I write half as much as I used to. It's probably more like a fourth as much as I used to. It's got to take it on too many things, probably by my own uh, choice. You mean like a podcast? A podcast, a blog, an e-zine. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff, though. I've pretty much budgeted my writing time to weekends right now and during the week is when I do all of the marketing all the blogging everything else involved so on weekends I'll schedule three or four hours where I I can just shut off the world and just work on my next novel and it's it's not easy because you want to write and that's what you're here for you love to write you love to create if you're like me, you don't like giving speeches. Uh, Scott's got a lot of experience. Yeah, I've got lately. a lot of hot, I've got a lot of hot air. <laughs> a lot of hot air. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've done one convention so far. I was on six panels there, and that that's it for me so far. So now, now my book's out there. I need to start working on that. Part of the problem is finding places where you can promote your book. Libraries. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, here's here's a uh, here's a tip. My my day job involves libraries, 
and uh, I was public library director for a while. And let me tell you, an email that's five screens long is not going to sell your book. You're not going to sell your book if it's in a weird actual format, like the book is spiral bound and half the size of what a normal book should. Uh, there are some physical considerations to that. But if you're trying to market your book, and it seems like this is where our discussion is going, you have to have those things in, in mind that you've got to sell it not in one email, in one shot. You are going to have to make repeated smaller efforts to build a relationship with that book buyer before they'll think about buying that book. And, and that takes time. Again, the, what we're talking about is time away from your writing. If you're going to become a successful book marketer, you're not going to do it with a five-page email. You're not going to do it with this random postcard that may or may not actually make it to the librarian's desk or the bookstores, you know, whoever's in charge of buying. If you're going to sell your book, you've got to take the time and you're not going to do it through them. You're going to do it through your potential audience who go to the library, who go to the bookstore and say, do you have this author's book? That's your target. And that takes time. Wow, and that, that's interesting because you've got to make that relationship with a potential fan base. And if you have a fan base, they're going to want another book. Exactly. So during all this, you've got to get that other book done. And I, I'll admit, I beat myself up over this all the time. I'm like, my, my book came out May 1st, and I don't have my second book ready yet. And I think the solution there is really you got to set up a firm time budget and stick to it. I'll throw out, a, you know, just a random example. You know, give yourself an hour a day for promotion and an hour a day for writing. You know, it, it's so hard for people to come up with the good schedules. We're busy. We're crazy busy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bo- both of us are still working our, our full-time jobs. And we both have families. Uh, you know, with families come all sorts of interesting issues that take you away from randomness. Yeah, life. <laughs> yeah. You know that happens, <laughs> and so you really need to to be thinking about uh, that with your with your goals before. I don't know if Jason, you went through this, but when I wrote my first book, I said I'm going to write a book a year. Yeah, it's completely doable because I, you know, it, it, I'll just spend all this time writing. I expected to be well into my revision stage <laughs> of my second book right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> I am still neck deep in first draft. <laughs> it just, I, I'm still promoting my writing. I'm still doing my, my possible future full-time career as a writer. But it's all, you know, I'm spending a lot of time marketing and talking it up and building relationships instead of the actual writing. Yeah, and a, a book a year is a goal. I think that's what we should shoot for. A, a year, it should be enough time. Six months to write it, six months to revise it. But then, when do you market? When do you submit? You know, I, I'm hoping my next book can be through an agent with a traditional publisher. That might take two years. It's all about just figuring out what's important, I guess. I, the way I try to budget time for stuff like this is I, if I know that I need to write, say, 500 words a day, and I know I can write 500 words in an hour and a half, then I look at, well, what can I give up for an hour and a half and work on? In my case, it's usually exercise, I guess. <laughs> but, or sleep. It's usually sleep. And you don't want to do that to yourself too many times. <laughs> we don't want to sound all doom and gloom here. Because right. we're still happy to be in the process. I mean, Jason and I are still talking about future book ideas, but still, until we get to that part part of our lives where we are full-time writers, where we can hire writer's assistants, <laughs> we just have to kind of be realistic in the time frames of when we get that second book done. Now, again, maybe you're lucky, get your first book sold or maybe you're, you're still able to write that second book while you're trying to sell that first book. It gives you that, uh, that heads up. Maybe we're talking about your third or fourth book at this That's point. True. Maybe you've got number two and you're selling that one to a publisher while number one is out on the streets. Congratulations. Right, right. 
Or maybe you don't have number one yet. Maybe you're querying it right now. But yeah. while you're querying it, it's a good idea to, to really work on your platform still and, and try to build that fan base before it comes out. Build that relationship with potential readers that are going to want to uh, buy your book when it comes out. But while you're doing that, it's great to be working on that second book. It's funny, the, the first book I wrote, I did as a NaNoWriMo, and it was the type of genre you could just get the words out, and, and I did it. And then the second book wasn't anything like that, and neither was the third so now I'm really struggling. And when I wrote the first book, I didn't have kids yet. Now I've got at least three that I know of. Without bump. <laughs> now I've got three young kids, and they're great. And they understand when Daddy goes downstairs to write that that's, that's his second job. And they don't usually cry. That's, <laughs> that, that's what buys them Transformers for Christmas. Yeah. I don't know I, if I've made enough royalties to buy a single Transformer yet. Not even one of those little, tiny yeah, little, little, little ones. Little little ones. We're getting there, but see, that's why we got to spend the time marketing. Mm -hmm. So we can buy lots of Transformers. Uh, <laughs> we ran that one into the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, I think what we're trying to say is be realistic in, in what you want to do. Don't give up. It, don't get frustrated. Don't, yeah. And the more effort you put towards the selling of your first book will help the sales of your second book and your third book. And, well, and however many more. And maybe it's not books. Maybe it's short stories or, mm -hmm. or screenwriting or whatever. But in this profession... There's a lot to be said about having a brand with your name. You know, with your name. Uh, a lot of people. Again, this is coming from my library career. Hey, is that new Dan Brown book coming out? They don't know the title. Right. They don't know when it's coming out. They just know it's coming soon. You know. And, and when's the next Grisham? When's the next? And they could be saying when's the next Tolkien. Well, he's been dead for a while, but they don't care. And he still puts out books. Yeah, he's like Tupac. <laughs> You know, but that's what's selling the the books to many readers is who is the author, and it'll help you sell yourself. If you if you have a self published book, and you sell ten thousand copies, <coughs> wow, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be sending out query letters to agents, and you'll be getting responses. Yeah. <laughs> you can say, I, you know, I I've got an audience already on my self published book or my small press book. Mm -hmm. You'll be getting an agent then. So brand building should not be something that you make a low priority. It actually should feel good that you have a product you can build a brand around now. Yes, that's so, true. So you should be able to. You should be flipping this around instead of, hey, I feel bad because I'm not writing as much. It's like, no, I feel good because I have something out there that I can start building the success for my second book now. Or the third or fourth or whatever what it is. And, and here's after you get multiple books, then you can kind of clump some of that marketing together. So it's not one and then two and then three and then four. It's right. one, two, three, four. Or one, two, three and four. It, it is hard to find time to budget, though. And I, I don't have a lot of tips other than, say, to just come up with priorities and don't spend too much time on one thing, I guess. So if you If you say... I'm just going to build my Facebook followers, then that's all you're going to have for a bunch of Facebook followers. <laughs> You've got to uh, have a good local or global platform, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Well, it also depends. Like, oh, okay, let's we talk about Facebook. My Facebook presence is horrendous. I'll admit that. But where I'm doing my work, it's at the level of the librarians. And what, I wrote a book about local history, so I'm going to that local place and working with the museum and, and movers and shakers in that community. You're doing a really good job. You, you zeroed in on who your audience would be, and that's who you're focusing on. Exactly. Now, my next book, which I'm hoping to have a larger audience, that's when I would bring in the Facebook presence and, the, and that type of thing. Yeah. Because I want to spread it out. So be thinking about that. If you're doing a local interest piece, you don't need to be doing a lot of Facebook stuff. Talk to the museums or the schools or the libraries or the police officers or the newspapers or whoever that local piece is about. Build up that local interest. Yeah. <laughs> if you're writing genres, find conventions in the area. Mm -hmm. Try to get on a few panels. My novel's young adult, but it's it's got a bit of a paranormal twist to it. But... I found a local science fiction convention. Um, a lot of my short stories and theme of absence are sci-fi based, so I didn't have a problem being on panels there to promote not so much my novel, but just promote myself. 
and, and my brand, if you will. But no matter what you do, don't stop writing, or by the time people want your next novel, it won't be ready. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be Harper Lee and wait 80 years. or. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she had a pretty good career, you know. Yeah. <laughs> No, See, that's, was, the, that's the good old days when somebody can write one book and live off it for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I don't know, because you write one book and then you're always chasing that book. If it turns out to be super successful mm -hmm. and you're always chasing the success of your, your first book. I'm happy <laughs> with the results of my first book. It could have been better. Again, it was my first book, niche, local content. I don't know if I could have lived with a one book, <laughs> it's the best book ever type of thing, and then... Yeah, so many musicians yeah. have that problem. You know, they spend 10 years and finally get their record deal, and then when the second CD is due, do they still buy CDs? No. Let's say album. <laughs> the no. second second album is due and they don't have anything, and then, you know, who's ever heard Alanis Morissette's second CD? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, who's heard her first besides me in this room? Uh, I, I, she had a That's second. A dated reference. This, this is after her Canadian pop. The, I think the, so. Okay. The Alas more set that our generation knows. Yeah. I don't know how we got into this discussion. But isn't that ironic that we're talking about time and we waste it? <laughs> we're still young and cool, I promise. <sighs> Maybe that's a good closing point. <laughs> I think our takeaway is don't spend your time thinking about Alanis Morissette. I think that's our takeaway. Finish your first book, publish it, either self-publish, uh, small press, go traditional with an agent if you can, and right away work on that second book. And on that note, I think we'll close out this episode. Thanks for listening. Visit us on the web at www.writegoodbooks.com. Check back next time. See ya.